and started already. We are live. We are bringing this to you tonight in stereo. We're live on the Chabad at La Costa Facebook page and... <laughs> That's not the way this is going to work. <laughs> no, I'm the host. You respond to what I say. We'll just say where you're I will from. prompt you. We got, we, got, we got customers coming. Hi, customers. Welcome, welcome. I can't see who it is in this view, but that's okay. Okay. Oh, Don is here. Hi, <coughs> Don. Suzanne is here. Hello, Suzanne. I think Suzanne is our best customer. What do you think? Should she Robinson? get some kind of award? Uh, she should get a, a reward. She should get combat pay for spending <laughs> so much time with us. That's what she should get. I think Lisa's on. Hi, Lisa. Oh, here they come. See? Here they come. The fan club is no, filtering. Nobody's in. on my. Or I'm it's, scared. Yeah, I know. See, I got, I got a fan club built up. I think it's just a bunch of very bored people. Hi, Lisa. Wave to you. Mir. And Mir. Hi, Mir. Good to see you. Mm-hmm. Glad you're with Mir. Oh, look, there's Hector. Hector, oh, como estas, hey. mi amigo? Hola, hola. Andale, arre, arriba, arriba. Okay. I get hungry for Mexican food now. Now, now I feel like eating a taco. <coughs> I'm telling you. Hector, how are you, my friend? Is uh, Hanala is on. I see Hanala. Who else is going to join us to do your own Seder? Do you see Don? Like, I saw Don. I waved to him. I said, hello. I'm glad you got this notification. Hi, Hanna girl. Hanna girl. Good to see you. Hello, Suzanne. Look at that. Suzanne stays up so late. I know it's way past her bedtime. Yeah, way it's past almost her 10 Hi, o'clock in New York. Way past her bedtime. And yet she's still on with us. Boy, she is a brave soul. Yes, me too, Suzanne. I really love it. Okay, we are going to get started now. Um, tonight's um, broadcast is brought to you uh, in honor of... Hey, Scotty, good to see you. Um, we're doing tonight's learning in honor. I want everyone to have in mind uh, Rebecca Glovsky. Uh, Rachel Bas Shabtai. So the, that the Neshama should have an Aliyah. Um, it's Chana Hale's paternal grandmother. And Chana Hale has a wonderful mitzvah that she loves to do, and that is to benefit the whole community when she has a yard site or something. She does um, a, a kiddish usually, but we can't do a kiddish this Shabbos. So this, what we're going to be doing is we are doing this class in the honor of that dear Neshama, and we are going to say special prayers for her on Shabbos. I will be saying, spe- you know, every prayer I say is pretty special. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. Uh, by the way, those of you who didn't hear the original uh, commentary when we first started and we were uh, discussing our positioning, we're bringing you tonight's class in stereo. Okay? That side is uh, the Chabad at La Costa feed, and this side is the Rabbi Eilfort Facebook feed. Hi, Elena. So, just so you know why we're looking back and forth, it's so that everyone feels the love. Okay, so we're going to learn in her honor tonight. We're going to learn how to do a Seder yourself at home. Normally at this time, we would be um, encouraging you in the strongest terms uh, possible. We would be uh, even nudging you a little bit. Why don't you come join us for our community Seder, yada, yada, yada. Hi, Rabbi Dasik. Thank you for joining us. I'm trying to wave to you, and I got it. Okay. Uh, but tonight, this year, I'm telling you, do not, Hi, do not, do not come to our Seder. Sorry, you're not invited. No, but no joint Sadarim. No joint at the Sadarim. No joint Sadarim at all, and you have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. The only guest you're allowed to invite is Eliyahu Hanavi. That's it. How many houses has he been to, though? And he's drinking out of everybody's cups. And he's drinking out of any, everyone's cups. But I guarantee you, you will not catch... I guarantee you, you will not catch the coronavirus from Elio Anavi. Hi, Varda. Yeah, Hi, Shana. Good to see you. You got... How many things in life are guaranteed? So, tonight we're going to go through how to make a proper Seder at home. Okay? So, we have a list of items that you need the that we're going to go through. The material that we have here, we can email you. Yes, uh, thank you for bringing that up, Rebbitson. So if you're interested in this checklist and this step-by-step three-page or seven-page 
step-by-step step Seder guide. We will be happy to email it to you. But what you need to do is send me a message in the comments. I check those after. If they're nice ones, I put a heart on them or a thumbs up. If they're not so nice, well, you'll find out. <coughs> Just make nice comments. But if you want emailed, if or if you want not to publicize it like that, just send me a private, private message, message uh, with your email address, and we will send you our notes from tonight, which includes a checklist. We got this wonderful material from J JLI, the Jewish Learning Institute, and highly recommend it, and you can uh, look at it yourself. Notes and everything that you need for a Seder. But here we're going to demonstrate. So let's go through the checklist. First and foremost, Rebetzin. First, it's asking for a Seder plate. So here's our backward Seder plate. I'm really tempted to turn my camera around. Mm, get dizzy. People on my side won't see it. Here, here's a Seder plate. A Seder plate. There's different types. There's as many different Seder plates as different kinds of menorahs. <laughs> Maybe more. Seder plate, remember, it's a custom. This is a custom. So, so you can it, have a silver one, a plastic. You can have artistic license. You can have artistic license. Here's a see, Seder plate. See, <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> I'm going to check your uh, posture in a minute. Let's see. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Okay, so let's look at the Seder plate. If I can hold this. Please do. You're gonna, there's six compartments. Some have five. Um, we use six. And the six compartments are as follows. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Steve, good to see you. Okay. Well, I think we should do that when we go on to that first. Oh, okay. What else do you need? You'll need a Seder plate. You'll need a cup. You'll need wine. Alcohol. No, no, don't drink that. Wait a minute. It's not kosher Pesach. It's not kosher. It's not? I don't know. Uh, yes, it is. It's not Roy Lachilas Kelev. You can have that Fine. on Pesach. All right. The next thing it has on our list actually is Shmura Matzah. This is a box of true blue Shmura Matzah. Are we giving away shmura Hand bought. We have some to give away, yes. Hand baked in Israel. Now, I will tell you, those of you who are shmura matzah um, aficionados. aficionados, a maven and shmura Experts. matzah, will tell you it's very hard to differentiate the taste between the shmura matzah and the box in which it came. Unless we get, there's some brands that are uh, special. This oh, actually is it. not so bad. No, this is not bad. This was baked in Kfar Chabad, Israel. And um, they don't put a date on it, so it was actually it was date it, it was baked, baked after last Pesach. That's no, for sure. No, it was it was baked before Hanukkah time. It was baked before the coronavirus outbreak. That much is for sure. So, um, if you would like some of that, we can get you some of that. All right, we'll get some shmur matzah. Next on your list is the grape juice or wine. Grape juice or wine, and um, yeah. You can have any kosher grape juice or wine. Red is strongly preferred for use at the Passover Seder. Red wine, because it is reminiscent of the blood, of course. It doesn't mention this, but you need like a three and a half ounce, four ounce cup for each person at your Seder. There's a minimum amount you're supposed to drink. 3.2 ounces. Right, which is 3.2 ounces uh, of the, each of the four cups. So you don't want a huge cup because the halacha states that really you're supposed to try and drain the entire cup at the Seder, or at least uh, the majority of it. Yeah. Okay? So, it, it, but it also has to be a minimum a sheer, a minimum amount. So you need a cup that's not tiny, like one of the little Kiddush cups that we use on Shabbos, but you also don't want a giant goblet because you will be under the table after the first or second so cup. So these are orange no juice glasses that we got years ago, and we use them as our Kiddush cups on Pesach. Do we have any left? I think we, we have, this is the this is one of them. I think there are two. two yeah, two we started left. with a bunch. We're down to like 12, two. We yeah. might have to renew our uh, yeah supply. Subscription. All okay, right, what's next. next on the seder plate? A hard items. boiled egg. Hard boiled egg. The top left of your seder plate is where your hard boiled egg is going to go. Uh, by the way, I want to add. Um, you know, Nahama is a wonderful, wonderful cook, but um, I have a can't miss recipe for hard boiled eggs. In fact, <coughs> Elena, you don't need to drink it in one gulp. Sorry for interrupting. We have a question. You need to, in other words, in one sitting. So you, when you start drinking, drink, 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 you should drink most, at least most of the cup, not just a sip and put it back down. So you're ending up drinking for most of the cups. Right. But, and you, it's better not to interrupt in the middle of drinking, by the way. Once you start drinking, you shouldn't be talking, for example. So you should, you know, kind of like open the hatch, down it goes. Look out stomach, here it goes. Oh, it comes. Whatever. Okay. Uh, that didn't work. No. Um, what else do you need? You need the egg. You and need then, a roasted piece. We use a chicken neck so, for the zroa. A lot of people like to use a lamb shank. 
Uh, we use a chicken leg with the uh, meat neck. Uh, neck, excuse me, neck with the meat s- scraped off yeah. of it. So that no one should think. It. One second. So no one th- should think that we did a uh, sacrifice of a chicken. You don't eat this. This you should actually. You roast it till it's mostly inedible, and then you take off whatever meat might be left on it. So nobody thinks it's something that we're going to be eating. These two represent very different sacrifices. So we've got the egg on the top left. And Wait, let's see what we need. And on the top right. Goes. Next. Hold on a minute. Uh, in response to Suzanne's question, oh, hi, Rabbi Krupkin. It's an honor to have you here with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, no, Suzanne, sorry. Mojitos are not kosher for Passover use. By the way, there are great, great lists available online of what is available uh, as far as kosher um Alcoholic beverages on Pesach, but it is a custom. Uh, but you have to uh, look it on. Where's it? CRC? Isn't it CRC? Uh, CRC web. has a great uh, list. It is a custom not to drink spirits on Pesach. Well, it's our custom. It's right. Chabad. Chabad has a lot of stringencies, chumras. So we will tell you about them, but you don't. You know, you should do what your custom is. We will speak according to what our custom is, but um, for, we have a lot of stringencies on Pesach. By the way. You know, in general, in general, it's um, it's good thing when the when the community can join together, can do things together, and so on. Um, Pesach is one time where people are really machmir, which means strict, and oftentimes uh, people have a tendency to poo-poo or criticize or look down at people who are what they view overly strict, or by the way, conversely, underly strict. Uh, it's really not a good thing to do. Uh, we try not to be judgmental. Hi, Elise, welcome. We try not to be judgmental of one of one another and so on. Uh, for example, normally our custom is not to eat in anybody else's house on Pesach. And this year I insist to the rabbits and we're keeping that custom. She might want to throw it out the window, but I'm telling her we're going to keep the custom. We're not eating in anyone's house, this, in anyone else's house, this Pesach. Um, but it is actually a Chabad custom not to offer anyone food if they come to your house. You just put down food, and if they want to eat it, they eat it, but you shouldn't actually offer it right. because there are all kinds of stringencies. Martha, this year, yes, there are kosher for Passover coffees, and on OUPassover.org, there's a list of um, coffees, toothpaste, all those kinds of things, which Rabbi will be talking about next week in your class on how to prepare. No. no well, next week is Seder night, so there's not oh, we won't next be doing week. that. Right. Um, okay. Okay, can I go further? Yes. Are you ready? All right. Now, next, we uh, need the, uh, so you have the zroa, okay? We use, again, a chicken neck with the meat scraped off. Then we use for the uh, maror, for the bitter herbs. We have two places for bitter herbs on the Seder plate, in the middle and in the middle on the bottom. Middle, 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 bottom. The one is for um, the first time we eat the maror, and the second, the bitter herbs, and the second, the second place is for the second time we do it for the sandwich, the Hillel sandwich, right? The Hillelite. So what in we Hebrew. use for bitter herbs are two different things, but you put both in both places. We use romaine lettuce. Now romaine lettuce must be washed carefully before the seder and checked for bugs. And checked for bugs. No but bugs. It also has to be dry because we don't put wet mat- wet um, lettuce on our matzah. So hold on a minute. Let me interrupt. Sorry, I want to explain that for a minute because okay. a lot of people might be scratching their head. What did you just say about wet matzah? This is a chumra in Chabad and a lot of the uh, a large part of the observant world not to eat the matzah um, wet, not to allow anything wet to to get onto it until no. the last day. Thank you, Rebetzin. Not to eat make matzah balls. Even uh, we don't we preclude any combining of the matzah with other foods and the singular exception to that would be for the Hillel sandwich that we're going to talk about soon uh, as part of the Seder. Other than the eighth day of Passover, on the eighth day of Pesach, or if you're in Israel, the seventh day of Pesach, we go out of our way to specifically eat the matzah with other things and have matzah balls and so on, just to demonstrate that we're not saying that those who eat the matzah with wet stuff on it are not uh, observing uh, Pesach correctly. It's just, uh, again, it's a chumrah. It's a strictness that we, we, that we observe. You might notice the word gebracht uh, and things. So ge- we're a non-gebracht place, which means we don't eat anything, matzah meal or anything like that, till the last day of Pesach. So matzah brai, to answer Rina's question, matzah brai on, on the last day of Pesach. 
Um, but I don't think any of places for painting your own Pesach plate are open because they are not um, essential services. We'll discuss matzah brai another time. Now it's not. Now we're doing the seder. Okay. So n- next, what else do you need? Romaine so lettuce. Romaine lettuce ra- okay. Be- Horseradish. So the romaine lettuce again. It has to be. You have to wash it carefully. Check it. No bugs. Okay. And then dry. Thoroughly dried. And you need a, one pe- two pieces per person. A minimum, yeah. Two pieces per person. Yes. Ground horseradish. So horseradish comes in a long root like this. Yeah, it looks like a white club. It does. Uh, and you need to prepare it to, in order to eat it. So we, you have to peel it. I recommend wearing a mask. Face masks are good for this. So you need to peel it. And then either people either cut it into chunks to eat or you grind it. Now, if you grind it properly, it actually releases... All that spiciness. So that makes it... Um, sharp. Yeah. Very sharp. Be careful with it. I recommend, unless you're a, you know, you really want to cry when you eat it, grind it a couple days early if you can. Uh, because if you grind it the day of and you then you keep it covered, you're going to be in for a big surprise when, when you take you a bite. It. Especially if you get a chunk. You might say, oh, so I'll just take a chunk. And you take a bite of it and you'll be uh, crying and choking and coughing and so on. So be careful with it. It's no not coughing. a joke. If you do your own. If you do your own. Um, if you're going to buy any of these items or whatever, it, very important, very important. It has to be properly certified kosher. Not only just regular kosher, but kosher le Pesach, kosher so, for Passover. So that answers Elena's question. If you do buy it from a store, it has to say kosher for Passover on it. Right. Now, what would not need to say kosher for Pesach on it, Rebetzin? What type of product? Um, hmm... They're, they do, uh, fruits so like, and vegetables is oh, the short sorry, answer. I thought you were going with like <laughs> no. under fruits and vegetables. More serious things. Okay, yes, fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are, are very whole serious things. and uncut. Right, unprocessed fruits and vegetables. Correct. Very good. All right. Next, chorosis. This is what you use. You use the mama's uh, recipe from the old country, right? Or whatever you want to do. Some people use um, walnuts. Some people use almonds. Uh, you mix it with some wine, you put in some apple and so on. It should be something sweet, but it should look kind of muddy because the charosis is meant to remind us of what, Rabbitson? The mortar that they use to make bricks out of. I'm mortified. Okay, next, Seder plate vegetable. So this is for the karpas, it's called. So we put the karpas there, and that is a, a green vegetable. We generally use uh, potato, some people use onion, other people use parsley, and so on. Hi, Shimon, good to see you. Okay, and then you need a bowl with salt water. I tried doing it once without a bowl, it didn't work very well. So you need a bowl of salt water so that you can control the flow of water. Can I tell you something? They actually sell Seder salt water at Ralph's in La Jolla. Really? Wow, that's awesome. That's like those red strings. It's like, okay. In case you didn't know the recipe. Right, salt water. It's really simple. You take water and you add salt. Okay, mix it up. Next, candles, right, because it is a mitzvah. Just like it's a mitzvah to light the Shabbat candles, it is a mitzvah for the woman of the house to light the Yom Tov candles, candles in honor of the holiday. Why would that be, Rabbitson? Why do women light candles? Women light candles to bring usher in light and to bring peace into the home. You bring literal and figurative light into the home by lighting candles at this time when the sun's starting to set. And so that sets the tone for a peaceful evening. Right. Beautiful. And the women are the ones entrusted with this sacred obligation because they are the ones best at creating a peaceful, wonderful, harmonious home. So that is why we do that. Okay, and now. The last thing. Finally, you need a Haggadah. It's a Haggadah. There's lots of different Haggadahs out there. Okay? Lots and lots and lots of them. Some people were saying they couldn't find any Haggadahs right now. I think you can find online even Haggadahs that you can download and print up before Yom Tov. Please, by the way, Pesach, like Shabbos, no technology. You're not going to be wanting to uh, surf the web. You're not going to be wanting to go on your Facebook feed and so on. Download your stuff in advance. Download in advance. Prepare in advance. Your Seder will be as great as you make it, but when you prepare in advance, that is the key. Okay. All right. Uh, All right. So now you have everything assembled that you need. Okay. So the Seder means order. 
So there are 15 steps and uh, the evening service is going to be davened, is going to be prayed. First, the women are going to light the uh, candles, the Yom Tov candles. This is an interesting year, by the way. You get a three days of holiday, three days of peacefulness Woo! in your home. Can Wednesday you imagine that? Wednesday night and Thursday. Wow. Thursday so, night and Friday and Friday night and Saturday. Right. So you light the first time Wednesday night. By the way, those who need it, we have these beautiful, colorful guides. I think it has the bracha in there. Pat, if you want one of these mailed to you and you didn't already get it, send me a, a private message with your address and we will be happy to mail it to you. It explains the times, but these are specific to uh, Carlsbad, Carlsbad, California. But this and is really good. And it has the bracha for candle lighting in here. It also has it. On these papers, if you want us to mail these to you, um, those of you who sent us messages. Right. Send us private messages. We will try and respond to everyone in a timely way. Don enjoys us. Okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want our notes from tonight and if you want the resources and so on, simple. Send me a message or you can put your email address in the uh, comments, comments or private message if you don't want it publicized like that. Okay. So we start with candlelighting. So first is candlelighting and then is Meyer of the evening service. By the way, the second night of Passover, you start a special mitzvah. There's, first of all, this time of year, it's rich with mitzvahs. There's so many mitzvah opportunities, more than you can shake a stick at. Rabbi E. No, no, no. You just send me your, one. Teddy, send me your email address. Yeah, she wants to know if she doesn't want to post it publicly. Where should right. she put it? She used to send me a private message on okay. Facebook. Send a, a message, a, 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 a me Facebook message Facebook with me. your email address. Yeah. Oh, okay. she lives in New York. I can still get her private message on Facebook and still email her. Oh, emails go instantaneously. Instant. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. Okay, so let's get back to this. Lots of mitzvah opportunities this time of year. Not only Seder, what are the main mitzvahs of, of Passover? Of course, those are to rid your house and yourself, internally, by the way, in a spiritual sense, of all chametz, of all leavened products. Get rid of it. Now you should be cleaning, heavily involved in your spring cleaning, getting rid of all the chametz. Get it out. Okay? Then, the positive mitzvah of Pesach is to eat the matzah. To eat the matzah throughout the eight days, unless you're in Israel, which is it's only seven days. And to tell Eating matzah and to tell over the story of the exodus of Egypt. In fact, the, the word Haggadah means to tell. Right, it means to tell. I'm telling you, that's what it means. So, that is what we do. Okay, we the women light the candles. We dav marv, the evening service. The second night of Pesach, I started to tell you the special mitzvah, Asfira Saomer. Kicks in. Sirius Omer means counting the days from the second day of Pesach until for seven complete weeks. Uh, that seven times seven is how many? Forty-five. Very good. I thought you weren't so good at math, but it turns out you're very good Internet at math. Squares. And the fiftieth day is the holiday of Shavuos cheesecake. Shavuos, the holiday of Shavuos, the holiday where we commemorate receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai when God gave the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. And we eat dairy on Shavuot. So we start counting the days because the two holidays are v intrinsically connected to each one other. to the other. I feel like Shavuot is the last days of Pesach. It is. It is considered the last days of Pesach in a way. However, the strictures of Pesach end after only the first week or eight days outside of Israel. Okay. So then you have made, uh, you've, you've davened Marv. It's time to start the Seder. You set up your Seder plate, as already discussed. Whichever kind of Seder plate you use, it could look like this, it could look like this. This, by the one, by the way, comes from the uh, Jewish Museum in New York. And we were donated a case of that. Yeah, we have a whole case. All right, so Seder plate. Yeah. All right, and then, so you've set up your Seder plate. So, by the way, that means set up your Seder ingredients before Pesach. Because if you can only start doing it then, you're going to have a very late Seder. Very, very late. And you need to finish the Seder before midnight the first night. Before midnight. I no know for some of you... No restrictions the second night. I know before. for some of you that means a big rush, right? To be able to finish by midnight your Seder. Big rush. Because some of you, I'm sure, are going to go till 2, 3, 4 in the morning. Rabbit's in, here, people watching, right? Rabbit's in here would gladly go all night if, if I let her. In fact, sometimes I let her. I just finish it myself and go up and she... She's there. Keeps on going. She rocks and rolls all night long. Hey, how are you doing, Joel? Good to see you. Welcome. Okay, so you're ready to start the Seder. You start with making Kiddush. Kaddish. 
it says, is the, the, the simanim, the signs of the Seder, are the 15 words, Kadesh, Urchaz, Karpas, Yachaz. Okay, that's your tune, not mine. Anyway, we make Kiddush. That means we sanctify the day, we make a blessing on the wine. So now, if this was Seder night, two things would be different. Number one, this would be filled with wine or grape juice, so red preferably. And two, I wouldn't be on with you right now because I wouldn't be using my phone. Okay, but it's not Pesach, we're just doing a model Seder. Right. So you fill it, you make the blessings you of the Kiddush. You fill it to the brim. Yes. All the way. The wine filled up is representative of God's blessing, so we want it actually to even overflow. Ladies, don't get nervous. If it spills a little on your uh, tablecloth, um, Don will wine. be happy to replace the tablecloth for you, right? Just send him your bill, cleaning bill. He'll take care of everything, right, Don? Wink, wink, chuck, chuck. Okay, so you make a blessing on the wine, and then you know what? You're going to do something very interesting and different on Pesach. It's filled with interesting and different steps. This is the first of many. You are going to, when you drink your wine, lean to the left. Lean out of the screen. You know that. Jews tend to lean to the left, right? No, we're not getting political. Don't getting political. We lean to the left because, you know why? Our esophagus is on the left side and our trachea is on the right side. And since we're going to be drinking and we're going to be gulping down the wine, we want it to go down the esophagus and not the trachea. And that is but also, why are we leaning at all? Why? Revitin. Because that is how royalty has eaten throughout the ages. Royalty has eaten reclining on a cushion of some kind with their table. And so the ability to recline... <laughs> She's Gracie, eh? <laughs> the ability to recline shows a level of royalty. And tonight, that night, at the Seder, not tonight, next week, um, we are royalty throughout the Seder. So Rebitsons, wait, wait, I have a question. Poor and we Rebitson, I have a question for you. The do the women also lean? Women do lean, yes. Women do lean? Yes. Okay, okay. just checking. Yes. All right, that's why, by the way, many people have the custom to have a, like a pillow uh, for leaning. And if, we, if you heard our presentation on Sunday, uh, about a family-friendly Seder, uh, it's a nice project for the kids to make a nice leaning pillow. Okay. Now, normally, if it was a normal night after Kiddush, you make hamotzi, you start the meal. But the Seder is not a normal it's night. It's anything but normal. We do lots of stuff that's weird. And here comes weird item number one. Don't call it weird. Call it different. Intriguing. Unu unusual and Extraordinary. Intriguing. Okay. Okay. All right, the next so thing we thing? do, first was Kadesh. The next step on the roadmap is Urchatz. Urchatz means you wash your hands. This is an, also another interesting and different approach because normally when you wash your hands, you get up, especially if you're Maishal, right? Rabbi makes Kiddush and I say, okay, anyone who wants a mozi, please go wash your hands. So everyone trudges over to the sink, waits their turn in line, unless they're like me and cut right to the front, and they wash their hands three times on the right, and three times on the left, and then what do you do? You make the bracha. Al netilas yidayim, right? Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy through his commandments and commanded us to wash our hands. We, we wash our hands in preparation for making hamotzi. In this case, though, the washing of the hands has nothing to do with hamotzi. It has everything to do with changing things up, with making things different to arouse curiosity, to make the experience interactive so that there should be a give and take, questions and answers back and forth, especially, especially, and especially for the kids. It's really And key. the kids at heart. Right, kids of all ages. So you wash, and oftentimes what we do to demonstrate our royalty, Rebbiton, please put out your hands, is that one person would wash the other. Rebbiton always comes and what likes to wash me, and then sometimes she spills a little like that by accident, not really. But uh, no, we have to be very one, careful two, three, not to get any water one, on the two, table. Three, you might right. get the matzah wet. We don't want to get the matzah wet. Right. You wash three times on the right, three times left, and this time you don't make a bracha. No bracha. No blessing. Because this is not a mitzvah washing, it is a customary washing. Okay? And so what are we washing for? What are we washing Kadesh for? Or hot? Karpas. Karpas. Karpas is the, the uh, spring vegetable, the green vegetable, or whatever you use. We or tend whatever. to use uh, potatoes and onions, burled potatoes. So we take a piece of potato, Katoshka and, uh, right, sibling. and we are going to dip it in the salt water and we make a bracha on the uh, potato. And Why the, do we dip it in salt water? To remind us of the uh, sweat and the tears of these Jewish slaves in Egypt. Okay, and what bracha do you make on your karpas, Rebetzin? Borei 
Puri Haadama. Can you translate it, please? The Creator. So there's a whole blessed are you, blessed are you, Lord, Lord our God, God King, King of, the of the Universe, who has created the fruits of the earth. Rabbi, what do we have in mind when we make that? We point? also think about not only the karpas, not only the uh, vegetable now, but also what we're going to be eating later when we eat the mara or the bitter herbs, because it's the same blessing. Because remember, what are we going to be using for bitter herbs? Two things. Romaine lettuce and horseradish, both of which, that's our custom, both of which are the same blessing as uh, the potato. Bari Priya Dhamma. Okay. So, so when we make a the vegetable. bracha on the vegetable right now, this at, at Karpas, we take the vegetable, we dip it in the salt water, we eat it with after you make the blessing without talking, you eat the vegetable. Okay. okay. And then you have in mind the next thing. All right. Here go we on. go. Next thing is also another twist in the road just to keep us engaged. Yachatz. Yachatz. We take the middle matzah. We didn't even say, remember, oh. the set up the, <laughs> we forgot. When you set up your Seder plate, list. it's supposed to be on a foundation of matzah. We use three matzahs under the, uh, under the uh, Kaira, under the Seder plate. Kohen, three. Levi, and Yisroel. Right. Now what we do also. is we take the middle matzah and we break it into two pieces. The larger of the two pieces we, according to Kabbalistic custom, we break that one into five levels. Thank you, because they don't know what five means without you showing them. Or you're just trying to hold your hand in front of my face. <laughs> okay. Ow, don't kick me. Oh, she didn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. You take the middle matzah, you break it into two, and then you take the larger of the two, you break it into five. You put the you smaller take, part back inside. Right, you put the smaller one back between the other two that are still whole, called shlemus, called whole ones, and you take the five, I hope you're writing this down furiously, by the way. Take your notes. And you put this into another possible project if you have little ones at home, of all ages, and that is a afikomen pocket. You so take creepy. it into something, you wrap it in a napkin. For people who sew, you can make like a little purse around that big with a zipper on the top and it's the afikomen on the outside. Fancy schmancy. Schmancy. I, just use, use, a, I just use a napkin usually. And you hide that away for later. The afikomen is going to be the last thing that you eat. Okay, not the last thing you drink. You'll have two cups of wine, but the last thing that you eat will be afikomen. Um, many people have the custom. This is not a Chabad custom, but many people... Faster? Huh? Do we have to go faster? No. Okay. We're doing great. Many people have the custom of um, hiding the afikomen and having the kids go and look for it and finding and it and quote unquote it. stealing it. But we don't want to teach the kids to steal. No. So um, generally we just put it somewhere where they can't find it. So unless they're trying. Anyway, um, the, we put it aside for later. The, the afikomen is for later. Okay, but it's again, it's a total change of pace. It's a different thing to do in the middle of a meal. Normally, what do we do? We make Kiddush, we make Hamotzi, and we eat. That's it. Not Seder night. Seder night is a learning experience. It's like a the, the, the meal is a classroom. And uh, it's a lot of chances to learn. A lot of mitzvah opportunities, a lot of customs, and so on. It's peppered, or that maybe that's the wrong word, but it's spiced with all sorts of beautiful customs. Things that the kids will remember their whole lives. I still remember starting from when I was a wee lad. A wee, wee, wee lad. Okay, many moons ago. Okay, we're up to the next part. This is where things start to get um, very deep and analytical. Historical, even. So we go from Kadesh to Urchatz, from Kiddush to washing the hands for the green vegetable. By the way, if you eat a wet vegetable, you're supposed to wash your hands first. Why? Because it's Royla Kabel Tuma, which is an ex interesting concept in itself. It means it's fit to become impure, ritually impure. Although these days everything is ritually impure, the washing is a matter of chinuch, of education, to prepare us for Mashiach coming, which should happen be may reveal meaning speedily in our day, and the reestablishment of the Holy oh, Temple, and having to guard carefully our ritual purity. So when we eat them, the karpas, though, we don't lean. We don't eat lean when we eat the karpas, right. Um, well, we didn't say anything about a general rule about leaning. We just said the first cup of wine. Cup of wine. So the Rebbitzin actually touched on something very correct, and that is the drinking of the four cups of wine, the eating of the matzah, um, and so on, and it will be spent in a leaning position. 
All of those things again, and it emphasizes royalty. So it would be leaning. Which side? Who remembers? Who remembers? Left or right? Left or right? We lean to the left. Why? Because that is where the esophagus is located. We don't want any choking. So because most people are right-handed. Okay. Next. Yachat so we did Yachat. 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 Now we're up to Magid. Magid. So now we're up to telling yes. the story of Pesach. Rebetzin, why don't you say how Magid begins? Okay, so we begin Magid by <laughs> uncovering the matzah. Slightly. Just the corner. Just take a uncover a corner of the matzah and you say... This is the bread of affliction that our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. All of these steps are in the Haggadah. Whoever is hungry, let him come and eat. Whoever is in need, let him come and conduct the Seder of Pesach. This year we are here. Next year in the land of Israel. This year we are slaves. Next year we will be free people. Rabbi, oh, and then you cover the matzah. This is written in Aramaic. Everything else is in Hebrew. Why is this one in Aramaic? Oh, sorry, was it my turn? We say it in Aramaic because that was the vernacular. It's, let me tell you something. It's beautiful to read your Haggadah in Hebrew. Beautiful. But you've got, it's key to understand what you're saying. Especially, remember, the idea of the Haggadah is to transmit the story of Pesach. So, if you're going to be sitting there reading Hebrew and your kids are going to say, huh? And it goes right over their heads. You didn't fulfill the mitzvah in the most beautiful way possible. So say it in English. That's why she just said it. That's why they wrote the beginning of the Haggadah in Aramaic. Hey, lach ma'anya. This is the bread of affliction. Now, any of you who've had some of our famous Shmura Matzah know exactly, exactly what the Haggadah means when it said it's the bread of affliction. You get what I'm saying? Hmm. Right. But that's also why we broke the middle matzah. This is called lechem oni, the poor man's bread. Matzah is two and only two ingredients, water and salt. Just kidding. I was just seeing if she was listening still. She was. Water and flour. Shmura flour. It's not just any flour, but it's flour. And shmura mayim. The water was mayim shalano. Yes, our water. No. That Sleeping was water. Yeah. I know. Okay. <laughs> I told her before, don't correct me online. I know what I'm doing. She can't help herself. So anyway, the matzah has two ingredients, water and flour. That's it. No yeast added. No nothing. No spices. Nothing. Poor man's bread. The little minimalist bread. And it is supposed to encourage within us the concept of humility. Chametz, at this time of year, the leavened products represent arrogance. Gaiva in Hebrew. It's something that must be expunged. We have to get rid of it. We've got to get it out of our lives. And we've got to instead imbibe of the matzah and allow the matzah, which is also called, besides lechemoni, besides the bread of affliction, it's also called the bread of faith. So if you and eat it healing. for eight days and you survived, you'll have faith. <laughs> it's also called the bread of healing. Um, we're now up to Magi, which is the lo longest part. The steps that we're telling you are in here. And if you look online, you're going to find commentary about every single word in the Haggadah. So if you want to make it a really long Seder, you can easily, especially if you're doing it by yourselves. I remember the Seder that I did by myself. I had the red... You did a Seder by yourself? I did. I did a Seder by myself. Can you explain what were the circumstances behind, behind that? I was in Israel. Oddity. Yes. Um, and I was alone in Israel. What was your maiden name? My maiden name was Israel. So you were in Israel in Israel? Yes, I was in Israel. Which tribe Israel. which tribal affiliation are you? Are you from are you a Kohen? Nope. Are you a Levi? Nope. Are you in Israel? I'm in Israel. What do you know? So Israel, who's in Israel, was in Israel. Yes. And what happened there? And in Israel they, they celebrate one Seder just the first night, but I needed to have a second Seder. And so um, Why did you need to have a second Seder? Because I'm an American. Right, and you were just visiting Israel, not living in Israel. Yes, if you move to Israel and you're living in Israel, you would do one Seder. But if you're just visiting, you still have to do the second Seder. So she was the only one in the whole house who did the Seder. You understand? She did it by herself, so but I her family sat around and made jokes. But I had the Rebbe's Haggadah, and there's tons and tons and tons of commentary. So we had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to read through all kinds. So you can find all this stuff online on Chabad.org, on, on Ashtar, everywhere, all different places you can find commentaries. <clears throat> Where there's um, now, let me ask you all a question, a rhetorical question. 
Why would you want to stretch out the Seder? I'm not asking you. I'm asking them. Rina, Rina, what's the reason? Why do we want to stretch out the Seder? I'll tell you why. It says in the Haggadah, Hare Zemeshubach, it is praiseworthy to really delve into the story of Pesach and analyze and think about and talk about. Really, we see, we'll see the story of the rabbis who were sitting in B'nai Brak and uh, they sat all night, all night, literally, all until their students the had to come morning. in the morning and say, Rabbi Seinu, rabbis, our rabbis, it's time to stop, it's time to say Shema, enough already. Yeah. Dayenu, that's right, how so, the song Dayenu got at it. So we're up, to Ma- we're up to Magi, which is the longest Sorry. part. Okay, so after you say the Halach Manya, where you uncover the Matzah, then you cover the Matzah, now you fill your second cup and put it down. Okay, I think um, rather than us telling them when to fill up the cup, they'll have to look Follow in the, the notes instructions in, in the, the Haggadah. Haggadah. It will tell you when to fill up the cup, when to lift your... All you have to know, though, is when it says, you know, raise your Seder plate or whatever. So this is how you raise the plate. See? This is how wow. you lower it. Raise, lower, That's- lower. Raise. That's talent. Okay. All right. Or sometimes it says to, to point at. We'll so see. you point out the different well, we're gonna, items. We're going to mention those things. Right. Well, but you, they won't remember that. So they have to look okay. at the notes. But here's one of the f- most famous parts of the of the Seder, and that is the fear kashas. The fear kashas. The fear kashas. I just spoke in Yiddish. Fear kashas means fire roasted. Uh, bu- uh, what is it? What's kasha? Um, buckwheat. <laughs> right. Fire roasted buckwheat. Fear kashas means four questions. questions. You know that song? There's beautiful thoughts, by the way, about the order of the four questions. Right. But go ahead, Rabbi, what were you going to no, say? No, I was going to say, you can find the Manishtana on YouTube um, if you don't know it. But you shouldn't use YouTube on Yamtiv. No, you do it now to learn it so that by the time Correct. the Seder rolls around, you know it already. Let's stop for a minute. I just want to remind everybody. If you want any of our resources, including uh, the Seder Guide, which gives nice tidbits and, and pointers and tells you how to do it, uh, send me an email. Okay, you can send me a private message with your email address and I will email you our notes and our resources, okay. all of it. Select okay? passages. Okay, I'm just keeping reminding you that. It's the commercial message. Also, I wanted to remind everyone, mm-hmm. tonight's learning is in honor of Rebecca Glovsky, Rachel Bat Shabtai, that we wish that the Neshama should have an Aliyah, that the soul should ascend to a very high level of heaven and there be a Melech Yesher, an advocate for good, for blessing, for the family and for the community, etc. And we thank Kana Hale for her dedication this evening. So okay. even if there are no children in the house, everyone, in fact, it is Chabad's custom that everyone says the Manishtana together. All right. All right. Now we go. By back. the way, another beautiful custom we have in Chabad is at least when we do it communally, not this year, but normally, we would do it in order of age, but inverted. So younger first, older last. And that's a nice thing to do. We also, another beautiful custom we have when we do a communal Seder is we try and do it in as many different languages as we can. You remember that, Rebetzin? We always do it. I'm very lucky because I live with a walking encyclopedia who prides herself on her numerous languages. She can say thank you in something like 36 languages. 52. 52. 52. But who's counting, right? So if you want to do things like that, it's nice. It's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. Add, enjoy. You know what I mean? What's the question? What's the ideal time to start a Seder? The ideal time to start a Seder. Excellent question, Elena. I'm very glad you asked that. What is the ex- uh, right time to start a Seder? So the ideal time is after Tzeis HaKachavim, which means after the stars have come out, which means after Mariv. So at uh, sunset, or just before sunset, that is when the women light the candles. Okay? That's when they light the candles. Then you do the evening service, okay? And it's good to wait for the evening service till it's fully dark out, which is about half hour to 50 minutes after uh, candle lighting. And then after that, that's the ideal time to start the Seder. Okay, now, however, let me add a a caveat to that, especially on the first night. If you have little ones at home who are not going to be able to stay awake, right, it's better to start the Seder a little bit earlier so that they stay awake and engaged, um, etc. And remember also, don't start the Seder too late because especially the first night, you're, we are machmir, that means we're strict. Halachically, according to Jewish law, one must finish his um, afikoman before midnight. The first night only. 
Okay. All right. Now we're ready we for you. Continue our matzah Rabbi. again, and we recite this paragraph. That we sing it. Avadim hayinu hayinu lefarai b'mitzrayim b'mitzrayim. Avadim hayinu lefarai b'mitzrayim b'mitzrayim. Hey, avadim. Which means it in English. we were servants to Pharaoh, we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. And God Almighty took us out from there with a strong hand and outstretched arm, etc., etc., etc. He redeemed us therefrom. And now it goes through the basic timeline of the history of um, the, the descent into Egypt. And it tells the certain markers, great things that happened, and how we know which day to observe Pesach, how we know how to observe Pesach, and so on. Here's a beautiful, I want to teach you all a beautiful uh, song that's part of it, uh, talking about how God um, protects us, uh, how we stood by our fathers, and how uh, despite the fact that many enemies has, have arisen against us through history, Hashem has pulled us through one way or another. Right, vihi sheamda, vihi sheamda, lava seinu, vila nu, shelo echad bilvad, amadaleinu lechalay seinu. I know I won't quit my day job. Don't worry. Anyway, that's a beautiful nigan that we sing together. A lot of family singing, a lot of family discussion, questions, answers, all about it. It's good to get into this stuff. And you should note, always note in the Haggadah, it says. Before you sing that song, cover the matzah, hold your cup, uncover them, put the cup down, uncover the matzah. So we're going to be doing that back and forth. Why, why do you think there's all these special instructions, Robinson? What, what's the purpose of that? To keep you involved. To keep you involved and also to help your hands and your eyes realize what the Haggadah is trying to emphasize at any given time. There's sometimes where it's emphasizing the message of the matzah and there's other times where it's emphasizing the message of the bitter herbs, It's for example or the Seder plate itself. So that is why we keep moving things back and forth. It's the ultimate interactive learning mechanism, the Seder is. It's brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. So now it continues the story of how we got down into Egypt, how we became slaves in Egypt. How the Egyptians embittered their lives. Yep, and then, then, and then that how Hashem took us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's used many times. By the way, um... Uh, what do you call that? Anthropomorphism, right? When you use anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. Okay, anthropomorphism. Descri describing God in uh, physical terms. We know I, this is very important to emphasize. Uh, we do not believe in a physical God. We believe God is not physical. Physical physicality, by definition, is defining, which means it's limiting. And Hashem God, is unlimited. Hashem is unlimited. He's beyond that. So realize there's a lot of that, however, with outstretched arm and so on, with the might of his hand. And, and later on, it's going to actually give us a whole bunch of imagery. Why does it specifically use the word hand here? Why finger there? Why arm here? And so these are, are things that we're, we're supposed to look into and say, well, why does it say it like that? And, and it'll give you answers. And, uh, you know, as much as... In general, when you're talking about Jewish learning, our ethic emphasizes the greatness of questioning. Questioning is always encouraged in Judaism. Always. No such thing. The only dumb question is the one that goes unasked. I love when she prompts me like that. It's just so cute. Aww. Anyway. All right. Uh, to... Wait a minute. If that's true, normally it's true on steroids on Pesach. Pesach, every... We used to have, when I was in, in yeshiva... Our Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Ezra Shachat, may he live and be well, used to give shiurim, used to give uh, lectures on the Passover uh, Haggadah for weeks, months actually, from right after Purim till Pesach, he would be giving us. And he would talk about things that would seem so inconsequential, but actually very deep and important lessons can be learned from them. Why this letter here, why this comma there, and so on. So every question is fair game. It's all good. And in fact, if we're, if we're fortunate, maybe we'll finish a few minutes early and give people a chance to ask questions. Maybe. We'll see. All right. So Stay now, tuned. now we've finished all the story of Hashem taking us out and we get to fire. I'm sorry. Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. We take our cup, our cup that we had filled and we put down in front of us. 
And we start the pouring process. Okay, so what is this all about? We've oh. now shifted gears. We've okay. gone from telling the story. Yeah, but there is an important thing about the custom. Okay, but we're not okay. up to that yet. Okay, okay. so <laughs> Rebison just wants to make sure I didn't forget. Yes. Okay, so we're shifting gears. We're going from telling the story of giving the background and the context and the enslavement and the oppression um, to shifting gears to now the redemptive process has begun. And the, the Egyptians, the Mitzrim, get their comeuppance, comeuppance for what they did to the Jewish people, the uh, centuries of slaughter, of oppression, of destruction, and so on. And God's attribute of justice was going to come into uh, emphasis now, into in sharp relief. And so... And this should be reflective of us, of us thinking about our own personal exiles and how there's... Absolutely. That's the beauty of the Pesach story, by the way. You can see your own story written in it if you look closely enough. And we'll maybe talk a little bit more about that later. Anyway, so you'll see when we're discussing these things, um, when we're talking about God's punishment of the Egyptians who richly deserved what they got, nonetheless, we don't celebrate their punishments. It's a really very Jewish ethic. That's why we're going to be spilling out a little bit of wine. Some people don't spill. They use their finger instead and dip. It's specifically our custom not to dip, but to pour and to pour into a broken dish. Why would that be, Rebetzin? Because the cup represents malchus, the kingship, and the wine represents strictness, the redness of the wine. And so we're showing that we're lessening the strictness well, of why the broken? Why a broken, Kaylee? Why a broken vessel? Oh, do you have a reason? That's just, you're the one who brought it up. So I I'm thought saying you might have it happens to mention it here. It is our custom <laughs> to put it into a broken cup. So that's why Okay, I'm it. thank oh, you. I do know the reason. Spilling from the cup into a broken dish, which yes. represents klipa. Oh. <laughs> That, that clarified everything for everybody, I'm sure. Okay, yes. thank you, Rebetzin, for that insight. All right, so remember, we are now spilling a little of wine each time we mention a different consequence of the oppression and the destruction of the Egyptians. So uh, we're going to mention then the uh, ten plagues, which are dam, which is blood, tzvardea, which is frogs, lice, Will, wild beasts, pestilence, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and slaying of the firstborn. When we mention each of those, we spill off a little. Uh, we spill it into a bowl. By the way, we're going to recycle that wine. We don't believe in uh, wasting either. We're going to use that wine later to fill up the cup of Elio Anavi of Elijah the prophet when we invite him to join us for the Seder. Now, it's interest, to me, this is interesting that uh, it says here, Rabbi Yehuda referred to, the, to these 10 plagues by an acronym. What is the acronym, Rabbi? Ditzach Adash Be'achav. And yes. what's interesting about that acronym yes. is that that is what was carved onto Moses' staff. Oh, wow. Very, very interesting. Yeah. I think we shouldn't do commentary like that, though. So I'm going to stop doing that kind of. Should I? Or yeah, no, yeah, I'd, I'd stay away from it, but that's okay. okay. All right. Now, now, we, um, now, what the rabbis are going to do is really, really funky. They're going to prove that they're mathematicians as well. And they're going to start multiplying the plagues. Multiplying plagues? Mm -hmm. Multiplying plagues? And this answer is absolutely yes. First, we refill our cup. Yeah. Thank you. We refill our cup first. According to the... If you just follow the instructions that you'll find in any Haggadah, you'll know when to refill it. By hearing us say it now, chances are you will not remember at the time of the Seder. But knowing so, that check. there is a thing, filling unfinished, yeah, pouring just, We keep reminding you, it's really important to follow the instructions that are in the Haggadah. It doesn't expect you to remember what to do. It's written in there what to do. Okay, anyway, why, do we, why are we multiplying it? Some say there's 10 plagues, right? We know about the 10 plagues, but some say there's really 50 plagues. Some say there are 250 plagues. Why are we doing that? The answer is Rebetzin. Why? Because it says here that any plague that struck the Egyptians would not strike the Jewish people. Right. So we're trying, didn't we're trying to find as many plagues as we possibly could um, that happened back then so we could say, that plague is in our past, no longer applicable. We're trying to get out of plagues. And God willing, uh, the, the plagues that we mentioned in the Haggadah, by the time we get to those plagues, the current plague shall be over and past. God willing, God willing, we have to pray. We have to daven hard because God knows we need it. Okay, 
what are we? Oh, we're up to a very, very famous song. You know, the truth is, I've had enough of the song. We've had enough of the song. Had enough. Had enough of it. Had enough. Die, die, a new. Sing along at home. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, a new. Die, a new. Die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, die, a new. Die, a new. Die, a new. You can do whatever plagues you want. This is really cool. It says, if God had just done this, taken us out of Egypt, it would have been enough for us. If God had just taken us out of Egypt and given us the man, it would have been enough for us. If God would have just taken us out of Egypt, given us the man, split the sea, it would have been enough for us. And we just kept, we keep adding, he did this for us and he did this for us, and it would have been enough, and it would have been enough. And, Why, Reverend? But also, as an example, I want, this is, I don't think we should give an answer. I think we should make them look it up. It, for an example, as it says, if had God has brought us before Mount Sinai and had not given us the Torah, it would have been enough. What was the entire point of going to Mount Sinai if... You read my mind. That's what I was about to ask you. Not getting the Torah. So I want to give a challenge. No challenges. Answers tonight. The Google. Go find the no, Google. No, 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 no. I'm afraid what they'll find on Google. <laughs> no, they might find some Google on Google. Google on Google. No, the, the reason why it's enough for us to be obligated to thank God. Because Each of these things in the and of themselves. Just the revelation alone was enough for us right, to thank God. Right, right. What is it trying to tell us? Kindalach. It's trying to tell us How to be we... very grateful people. Why? Is God insecure? Does God need us to say thank you? Does God need us to tell us tell him how great he is? Doesn't he already know? He's omniscient, right? Of course he knows. Yeah. We need it. We need to remind ourselves. And here's the thing. Grateful people are happy people. So really, really, it's, it's uh, beneficial to ourselves. <coughs> See how Robinson demonstrates how to do a proper sneeze? They didn't see. She just saw. Well, well, I did it off camera. Into her, into her arm. Into it. Yeah. Okay. okay. You want to use some of this and now? It would be a good idea. Just okay. to show. Yeah. Right. See? Sneeze. See? She sneezed. Now rub it in there. Okay. Back. Soft and supple. Right. Now okay. This dries your hands out. Yeah, I know. My hand's getting cracky again. Okay. Okay. And um, next. then the next paragraph is how much this is all the more so we should be grateful to Hashem for He doubled and He redoubled all of the blessings. That's another beautiful Chabad tune there. Allah has come of Echama, Tevacholo, Mokhel, Smachem, Aleinu. Allah has. Okay. Now comes one of the most important parts of the Seder. Yes. Discussing the major components of the Seder. And they are three. What are they, Rebetzin? Pesach, which, which means, means the sa Paschal sacrifice. We don't have one, but we'll point at this dude here. Right. And matzah. And, which, yeah, matzah. And marar. So the as herbs. we mentioned, each one, you're going to point at them. These are the three major components of the Seder. That what you must have. In the time of the Holy Temple, you had to have the Passover sacrifice, you had to eat matzah, and you had to have bitter herbs. Right. These three things. By the way, can you think of a time when we would eat all three together? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the Hillel sandwich is supposed to be reminiscent of that time. But can you imagine the times of the Holy Temple when you had that fresh roasted lamb with some horseradish sauce and a matzah? It must have been good. very good. And I think really, the matzah really was good. probably soft in those days. Maybe it was oh. soft. I don't know. Okay. Galafa. So what are right. we up to, Rabbitson? Now we are hope, picking up the cup again. Okay, so now we're getting up to a part which cup, is almost Hallel-like. It's praising of God and so on. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention the Mar of Prayer. Oh, thank you for all those hearts, whoever's sending them. We Oh, it's probably Roy. Hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Shalom. So, um, you know, one of the interesting things and differences about Mariv, the evening service on Pesach, is that we say Hillel, Hallel in the middle of uh, Mariv. The Hallel are special added prayers, uh, excerpts of from the Psalms, which are praising God. Very beautiful, uplifting, and you do it a lot on Pesach, a lot of Hallels. Okay, you do it in the evening service. Normally we only do it in the morning service, but on Pesach you do it in the evening service, and you do it in the, uh, in the Haggadah as well. Rina so, wants to know what, what the sacrifice was supposed to do? The sacrifice, the Passover sacrifice... We was first commanded when the Jews were still in Egypt and they took the blood therefrom and they painted it on their doorpost, Mizuzot, to signify this is a Jewish house so that the angel of death would pass over it, hence the name Passover, on its way to killing the firstborn in the other homes. So it's a memorial well, of the but, death, that evening. Well, the later ones, yes. God later instituted that commandment for all uh, future res um, generations while the Holy Temple was in existence. 
But a deeper reason why we needed it is because the Jews at the time when they were still in Egypt before they left, they were empty in the spiritual mitzvah department. Their bank accounts, their mitzvah accounts had gone to empty because they just had become so influenced by the Egyptians and so on uh, that they were lacking in good deeds. Now, I'm not, God wasn't blaming them for this. What he was trying to do was give them a remedy for this. And that is to be able to do a mitzvah and a mitzvah that took a considerable amount of self-sacrifice or willingness to sacrifice the self because the lamb was one of the many gods of the Egyptians and to sacrifice it and to say, this is what we're doing with it, showed self-sacrifice. So it really filled up that mitzvah account very, very quickly. Filling mitzvah accounts is a very beautiful thing to do, something that we should all consider. Uh, Pesach gives us many opportunities to fill that mitzvah Actually, account. Yeah. You all have a mitzvah account. So Magid ends with the Lefichach, therefore Hashem, we have to thank Hashem for taking us out of Egypt. Then we sing a little bit of praise to Hashem. And then, dun -da -da -dun, then we're going to do the second blessing, uh, the second cup of wine. We drink the Bori Priyagafen. So remember, you would refill the wine during the Magid, during the telling of the story of the Passover exile and redemption. You'd spilled out some by the plagues. You refilled it after spilling it out. And now at this point, you're going to lift up the cup and you're going to hold it for a very long blessing, actually. I mean, usually the Kiddush blessing is relatively short. This time it's a couple pages long. So uh, hopefully your hands aren't too shaky. Um, and you uh, hold the cup. It's filled to overflowing with wine because, again, that's representative of divine blessing, that God's blessings in our lives should overflow. And then you're going to say the blessing again of Bori Priya Guffin. You're going to drink the wine. And what are you going to do when you drink the wine? You're going to lean to the left. Yes. As we do, and Drink signifying at royalty. Most of it without pausing while leaning to the left. Okay. We have now finished Magid. Right. That is the longest part of the Seder, by the way, by far. The, the oh, next. The, the, what? I think that near to how long is it? Well, Magid, though, by, by Magid, yeah. people tend to talk and discuss much more yes. than other times. So, Magid usually is the longest part. Now you're up to the part where you're going to start really eating. Okay, so we're up to Rachta, where we again go and refill our cup. And if you want, it's a nice thing to wash people by the table. Um, I would suggest before you wash anyone by the table that you put something underneath it, the water, a, a receptacle, bowl. so it doesn't okay, go straight on. Yeah. And you wash one, two, two three, three, and one, two, one, three. Two, and this two, time, you do say the blessing of Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokeinu Malach Elam, Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvot Savitivanu, Thank you, Rebbeton, for reminding Just me of the blessing. Case. I might have forgotten it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy through his mitzvahs and commanded us to... Lift his hands. Right. Well, it's lifting your hands. Wa it means washing your hands. Yes, we wash our hands. Okay, it's a mitzvah. This time to say the blessing, because this time, after you do it, you're going to do the hamotzi. And we don't talk. But not just the hamotzi. Right. What bracha is he going to say? We're going to do two brachas. Before Hamotzi, you do the bracha of... Uh, first, uh, first you do Hamotzi, sorry. You're holding all three matzahs. Well, two and a half. The two whole ones and the middle half one. Right? The middle one had been broken for the afikoman and put aside. So you hold, Then you let go of the bottom one and you're holding on to just the top one two. And, and you say, Al Achilas Matzah. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by his commandments and commanded us to eat the matzah. Yes. Right? And this, First hamotzi, then alachilas matzah. You need to eat a half a shmura matzah. Right. About a half a, a matzah. A half a shmura matzah. It's not enough just to eat a little bite. You right. have to eat what's called a shear. There's a certain amount. But we won't focus Within, too much on that. And it's, the instructions are in the Haggadah. Right. Follow the instructions. What do you do when you eat the matzah, Rebetzin? You lean... To the... To the left. Left. And now here's something really that's going to catch you guys off guard. We encourage crumbs onto the floor. Now don't get your crumbs on the table in our house. Right. Oh, we wait, try, they're not coming to our house. We, yeah, sorry. You're not coming to our house. So we don't want to get crumbs on our house because we don't want to get the crumbs to, get, to become wet, as we discussed before. That would be a crummy situation, right? I love cracking jokes about the matzah. Okay. You know, we only have 10 minutes left. I know. Exactly. We have to go faster. Okay. Now we're up to the maror, the bitter herbs. Okay, so you take the um, leaf of romaine. romaine lettuce. Thank you. You put some of the crane inside of it, some of the uh, horseradish. You roll it like a burrito. Now here, this is strange. You take it and you dip it into the harosis. You dip it in the harosis, but the point is not to eat the harosis. The point is to dip off. it. 
The point is to dip it just so it's different and the kids will say, why are you doing dipping? What's all this dipping business? So you dip it in the charosis. You can wipe it off. You don't have to wipe it off, but you shouldn't be tasting really the charosis. You should be tasting the bitter herbs. You make the bracha on the bitter herbs. It's a mitzvah Because we to made eat the bitter bracha herbs. on the vegetable behind, before, earlier with the karpas. Right. Mm-hmm. Only on the bitter herbs. Al achilas maror, the blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us through his commandments and commanded us to eat the bitter herbs. We do not lean when we eat the bitter herbs no. because we're not trying to emphasize royalty then, we're emphasizing the Being slavery, the, slavery. Okay. the oppression of slavery. Next is the krich. The korech. Oh, korech. We make a sandwich, a hillelit. Right. What is compri- what's in the three ingredients in the sandwich, Rabbitson? Two ingredients. And eh. Marar. Yes. Oh, I see three ingredients. Fine. Yes. Yeah. There's matzah. Yes. There's the horseradish ground up, rolled it like a burrito into the um, romaine lettuce. And, and then, then you dip that into the haroset and you, you wipe it off. Right. And then you have to eat the sandwich, which consists of about a half a matzah again, while leaning to the, to left. the left. Right. Eat it. It's called a, a hillelit. Or yes. korech, a sandwich. Korech. Okay, you thought it was invented by the Earl of Sandwich? No. It was, a, it. It was uh, invented by Hillel, the prince. Okay? Then we're up to the part of the Seder where I really excel. I mean, this is where I hit my stride. This is where I differentiate myself from anyone else. Sholchan Arach, the meal. Woo-hoo! The meal. So, because right. we're all hungry by this point after drinking two cups of wine, eating all that matzah and the marah and so on. Many people, by the way, start their meal with what, Rabbits? And what do they eat by first? By eating the egg from the Seder plate right. I thought dipped you'd... in salt. Water. I thought you'd find that appealing. I didn't want to make too many yolks about it. But yes, you take the hard-boiled egg, you peel it first. It tastes better if you peel it first. If you like it crackly, don't peel it first. You dip it into the uh, salt water and you eat that egg. Just a custom. You don't have to do that. Right. Then you eat your full yomtiv meal. A full yomtiv meal... According to Talmudic uh, tradition, it consists of a uh, course of fish and a course of uh, meat. And in between, we often do... If you are a vegetarian, you don't have to eat either. If you're a pescatarian, eat the fish. Okay? Uh, But you should eat the meal and enjoy it if you want to add cups of wine. Previously, you can't add cups of wine. You can only do the two that are called for. Later, you can only do the two that are called for. In the middle, if you want to drink more, not highly recommended. Uh, you can, though, if you want. But it does say drink enough liquid, and probably not wine, so that you're not thirsty later on, because you're going to have... Uh, yeah, you're going to have the uh, afikomen. Yeah. All right, now that's where we're up to. Okay, so then we do tzafun, we go and we find that hidden afikomen and we eat it, we apportion it out. We had broken it into five pieces, but you make sure everyone around the table gets a piece of afikomen. When you eat it, what do you do? You lean to the left. left. I'm going to drill that into you. Lean to the left. You eat the afikomen and then it's time to, it says like this, you eat, the Torah says, you shall eat and you shall be satisfied, uve rachta, and you shall bless. It is a mitzvah. In the Torah, positive commandment in the Bible to thank God when you have eaten and been satiated. So we're going to bench. That's the Yiddish word for bless. And we do it on a cup of wine. So you can gonna... always bench, by the way, on a cup of wine. But especially on <clears throat> Passover, we do it. So you're going to do two cups of wine. Besides, I mean, one for yourself. And you're going to pour a cup for Eliyahu Hanavi at this point. Okay. So then you do your benching. The grace after meals. The grace after meals. You hold your cup till after the third blessing. Okay. Then you put it down. You'll There's see instructions, in, instructions in the Haggadah. After okay. you finish the grace after meals, you say the blessing of wine again. Again, you lean to the left. You drink your third cup of wine. And then what you're going to do is, is... Refill your cup of wine. Refill your cup of wine. Make sure the cup of Elijah is filled. And then is the time that we invite Elijah in to join us yes. for the Seder. So you send, usually the custom is to send the youngest person to go open the door and while say... While holding a candle. And while holding the candle and to invite Elio Anavi in to join us for the Seder. There's actually, if I may, just briefly on my Facebook page, there is the story of the time when the Rebbe had a Seder alone and it does talk about him. Um, there were boys who were watching. They wanted to see if they can get a glimpse and they see him walking outside with the candle inviting Elijah in. Okay. So, the Elijah should definitely be included in your Seder. He's the one guest you're allowed to have this year. 
Okay. All right, so you say they bring the candle, you open the door, and there's a paragraph, the paragraph that's read. Right. Okay. Then you close the door. And now is the to. what's called the last two steps are called Hallel Nirza. It's reading the Hallel prayers again, many prayers of praise, songs. A lot of people sing these out loud together, um, and you really uh, it's supposed to lift up your spirits so that you're just you leave on a high. You're just so happy by the time you get to that fourth cup. You feel so good. You feel so close to Hashem. You still feel, feel so blessed and protected by Hashem. And all these things just feed into that feeling of general well-being and happiness and peace of mind. My favorite prayer is in here. Her favorite prayer is in here. That's good to know. Nishmas. Yes. Nishmas Kolchai. Yes. Well, you say it every Shabbos. Yes. You think about that every Shabbos too? I do. Oh, good. Okay. Why don't you tell us why it's your favorite prayer? It just talks about praises of Hashem and how happy. It's like a song describing how the waves and the, and, and the eagle's wings and how wonderful Hashem is, basically. Yes. Okay. All right. So then you get to the last part, and then you're to the place of, guess what you're going to do? You're going to make a blessing on the wine. You make a blessing on the fourth cup of wine. This is number four, if you can still see. Some of you, after that many wine, you might think it's the eighth. You know, you're going like this, right? Oh, my gosh. But it's only the fourth. You say the fourth cup of wine. And what do you do when you're drinking that wine? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? You lean to the left. left. Right. Yeah. Why, why do you lean to the left, Rebison? We lean to the left because it's a sign of royalty. And we lean to the left Why left as opposed to right? Bec- well, there's multiple reasons. One of the reasons is because you're more likely to choke if you're leaning to the right because it... It says that the esophagus is further left than the trachea, and we want the food to go down the esophagus as opposed to <laughs> making you cough. Okay, thank you. The prayer that uh, Rabbits and Nechama like so much is called Nishmas. Suzanne's asking. Nishmas. Yeah. Okay, and then you say the blessing after the wine, and then we're up to Lishana Haba Be'erushalayim Lishana Haba Be'erushalayim Hey, Lishana Haba Be'erushalayim, shine, 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 be'erushalayim, habnu ya, l'shana haba. Right, which means the coming year we should be able to celebrate Pesach together together in Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem, that we shall be free people. You know, you might say, wait a minute, aren't we free now? Are we? First of all, we're not even supposed to leave our house. We're still very much in Gullus. We're very much in exile right now. We're not truly free. We're not going to be free until evil is eradicated from the world. And you know who is going to eradicate evil? You are. And we are. We're going to work together and that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring light into the world. We're going to eradicate the evil. So finally we can celebrate as free people, have true joy. That is the end of the Chabad Haggadah. However, many people have beautiful customs. They sing all sorts of lovely songs associated with Pesach. For example, Chad Gadya, the one uh, little kid. It's about right. the, the goat. And who and, knows one. And who knows one. It's all different themes with the same, uh, different words with the same theme, that being the oneness of Almighty God and different numbers with significance. Who knows one? I know one. One is Hashem. Two are the tablets that Moshe brought. Three are the patriarchs. Four are the matriarchs. Five are the books of the Torah. Six are the books of the Mishnah. Seven are the days of the week. Eight are the days till a bris mila. Nine are the months till a baby's born. Ten are the Ten Commandments. Eleven are the stars, stars in Joseph's dream. dream. Twelve are the twelve tribes, tribes of, of Israel. Israel. Thirteen are the years till a bar mitzvah. Okay. Um, so you sing songs. You have a good time. Now, listen, guys. Here's the thing. God obviously thinks a lot of you. He thinks you guys are magnificent, incredibly powerful, spiritual powerhouses, every one of you. You know why? Because he said, this year, he said it, if you're listening, you don't even have to listen so closely. He said to you very loudly, you can do it yourself. You don't need to be with the rabbi. You can do it yourself. And in fact, he's saying you will do it yourself. So don't be afraid to do it yourself. You can do it. I'm promising you can do it yourself. And you make it much more meaningful. Yeah, it's going to be really awesomely awesome, as I like to say. So I hope so. I really hope so. So I want to wish you all, um, we're not done. I mean, we're, we're done with tonight's class, but we're not done with you yet. Remember, these are the commercial messages. Number one, 
every morning at 7.30. Join me right here on my Facebook page for Tanya with Rabbi E. Uh, every weekday, that is. Okay? And we still have a few more weekdays till the Passover holiday. So I hope you'll join me. I hope to see you here tomorrow, bright and early, 7.30. Uh, we have other classes. Lots of other virtual classes yep. are available. Check the Chabad There's, at La Costa Facebook page. the Rabbi Facebook Hebrew page. reading, yeah. uh, the weekly Sicha of the Rebbe. Um, what else? Ooh, lots of them. Check the Facebook yeah. page and you'll see a full listing. Kala baking and times. together. Right. All sorts, of, all sorts of fun things. Okay? If you miss one of our classes, you can check our YouTube channel, Chabad Virtual Academy. Academy, and you'll find all their classes. In fact, I'm starting to urge people to no subscribe. Tech during Pesach. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, please don't use any of the technology during Pesach. Give it a rest. It needs a break. Okay, we've been over reliant on it. This is also part of the message of the holiday. Take a break from it. You have to read real books. You have to daven. You can do it. We can help. Uh, other message uh, for you. If you would like one of these beautiful, explanatory Passover brochures, send me your address in a private message and we will mail one right out to you. Okay? But you need to do that pretty quickly or else you won't get it in time for Passover. But it tells you which blessings to say when and so on and what the words are and the different observances. Uh, those of you who are local and you would like a uh, Seder to go, we are offering a Seder to go. Uh, option you can we can cater your meal for you through Chabad of La Costa, or we can provide yes, you yeah. your Seder plate needs for you, or different uh, how tos guides. All of that is available. Also available all the resources from tonight's class. Just shoot me an email we'll send or send you. me your email address. We'll be happy to send that out to you. We'll send you the Seder checklist, I, the step everything, step Seder guide, all the resources, selected, so, yeah. all the resources. I wanted to again thank. Acknowledge and thank uh, Hannah Hale um, that tonight's class was in honor of Rebecca Glovsky, Mayor Neshama, have an Aliyah, Mayor Sol, sent to a higher level, Gan Eden. We appreciate that. Um, we appreciate uh, all the mitzvahs that you guys do and uh, that you keep us going and you keep us rolling and you keep the lights on. And we, we try and show our appreciation by providing you uh, meaningful spiritual content and when needed, uh, delicious kosher meals, and whatever you need. That's what we're here for. Mm, we're here for you. for you. So don't be shy. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you later. God bless. Good night, everybody. Good night.